Much of our country's written history begins in Cebu, where Ferdinand Magellan landed on its shores on March 16, 1521. It is the cradle of Christianity in the Philippines, as can be seen from tourist attractions like the Magellan's Cross, which the great navigator placed on this very site on April 21, 1521, and the Basilica Minore del Santo Niño, where the miraculous image of the Christ child is enshrined. With its rich history, Cebu is a city of firsts. It was the site of the first Spanish settlement in the Philippines, of Fort San Pedro, the country's oldest fort. And Cebu is the oldest city in the country. Today, Cebu is considered the Queen City of the South and is one of the most progressive cities in the Philippines. It has opened the southern Philippines to the rest of the world through the Mactan Cebu International Airport, as well as the Cebu Port Authority, which handles its domestic and international ports. Because of its scenic and breathtaking beauty, many tourists flock to Cebu and its world-class island resorts. Cebu is blessed with a bounty of talent who have brought much pride to our country. These include furniture designer Kenneth Kobonpoe, jewelry designer Noreen Tseng, and homegrown talents Philip Rodriguez and R.C. Gayatin. The recent entry of business process outsourcing firms have also contributed much growth to the economy. The Queen City of the South is the site of SM City Cebu, a premier mall in the Visayas Mindanao region, where many tenants are proudly homegrown. Two more SM malls, one in Consolacion and another in the South Road properties, a 300 hectare prime development, are scheduled to open within the next few years. As we can see, there are many things that draw people to Cebu. Faith, business, tourist attractions, and of course, it's food. Today, we will discover Cebu's rich culinary tradition as SM and the Philippine Star take us on a culinary tour in my city, my SM, my cuisine. Good afternoon. I'm Cora Alvina, your guide to my city, my SM, my cuisine. People with a proud sense of regional identity have brought forth Philippine regional cuisine. Culinary styles evolved among the major regions of the archipelago, the variations traceable to our rich natural resources and to the gustatory tendencies and communal practices of families and communities. My City, My SM, My Cuisine, a joint project of SM and the Philippine Star, aims to help us discover our country's rich culinary heritage by identifying, collecting, retrieving, and promoting traditional recipes and culinary techniques. This is food heritage conservation at its very best. Because of its rich past, it is not surprising that Cebuano cuisine has been documented as far back as the 16th century. Today, Cebuano cuisine, like most of Visayan cooking, is generally simple. Meat or fish is merely boiled with vegetables and spices to prepare a dish called tinola. Sometimes fresh coconut milk is added to tinola to make a new dish called utan. When fish or meat is barbecued, it is called sinugba. Fish, sea urchin, and seaweed are also prepared as kinilaw by having them washed, sliced thin, and soaked in vinegar with tomatoes, salt, ginger, onions, and hot pepper. We will discover all of these and more as my city, my SM, my cuisine goes along. Hi, I'm in the house, specifically the kitchen, of Mrs. Luz Mancao San Diego. She is Sabu's grand dame of folk dance and ballet, and obviously also a great cook. She's the mother of choreographer Val San Diego. We are very lucky that this afternoon, she has allowed us to come into her kitchen and share with us her family's recipe of perdiz. Good afternoon, Mrs. San Diego, and thank you very, very much for having us. And, and thank you for your wonderful introduction. Oh, I, I forgot the part about ballet. It's something yeah. that we share, share and which is shown all over your apron, wonderful apron. 
Anyway, could you tell us about Perdiz? Um, actually, this is a family recipe of my in-laws. Yes. My mother-in-law told it to my sister-in-law, and my sister-in-law told it to me. Uh, gave uh, gave the recipe to me. So, but because I understand that this Perdiz was the main recipe of uh, Carcaranons mm -hmm. during town fiestas. Yes. Before the war. There's no fiesta, there's no perdes and hamonada. Those I are the see. two uh, uh, traditional recipes that we are proud of. In Karkar. Karkar. But there's also chicharron, of course. Who and now it is. <laughs> <laughs> Who can forget Karkar chicharron? Maybe we can uh, start. And how do we do? So this is it for yeah. this, and I'm very happy to have tried it again after many years. I had it in Kaikar, and we would like to thank you for your hospitality and for pleasure. sharing the recipe with us. The pleasure is mine. I always want to share my recipes to anybody who would love to have it. Thank you. If Cebu is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country, it is not surprising that its homegrown cuisine is a major attraction. You can't talk about Cebuano food specialties without talking about its lechon, with its crisp skin and delicately flavored meat. Lechon is often eaten with hanging rice or puso, an integral part of Cebuano food. Called puso, the Cebuano word for banana blossom, these are a creative way of packaging rice. As an island paradise, Cebu is rich with gifts from the sea, best known of which is dangit, or rabbit fish. Best when sun-dried, dangit is best eaten with sukang pinakura, and it is said with one's bare hands. Cebuano desserts are also distinct. Dried mangoes, budbud pilipi, a sticky rice snack, and torta visaya, a tuba pastry. Hello, I'm in the home, the beautiful home of Annie Osmeña Aboitis, who has graciously allowed us into her kitchen. Annie, or Mrs. Aboitis, is one of the most accomplished women of Cebu. She studied uh, fashion design in Parsons, but she will share with us very, very graciously one of her family's heirloom recipes. Hello, yes. thank you for having us. And what are you doing for us today? Well, this is what you call caldo pooch. This is a dish from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Her father, my grandmother's father, originated from Barcelona. Okay. And uh, Puch is an old family uh, name, very common. Mm -hmm. And Caldo Puch is, uh, maybe it, it was from a family, the name Puch. Yeah? So this is, this is it. Okay, I mean, yeah. and how do we start? and crisp yes. and we're retrieving it. This is the last that you put in the soup.
thank you very much for sharing this with us. You're welcome. Oh. It's my pleasure. <laughs> this is Caldo Puch. Thank you to all those who made this version of my city, my SM, my cuisine possible in Cebu City. Thank you to Ms. Marisa Fernand for all the arrangements. Daghan salamat to Mrs. Luz Mancao San Diego and Mrs. Annie Osmeña Aboitis for opening their homes, the kitchens to us. Thank you for sharing your family secret recipes with us. Thank you too to all of you who joined us this afternoon and this evening. We will see you next when my city, my SM, my cuisine goes to Baguio. Daghan salamat.